Hi, I'm Claire Rowley, and today I'm going to teach you how to make a summer sarong from some beautiful fabric using the creative feet. I hope you enjoy learning how to make a beautiful accessory for your summer wardrobe. Because this fabric salvage as is attractive, I don't have to finish all sides of the fabric. If your fabric is see-through, lining up your edges to create a perfect 90 degree angle is much easier using a cutting mat with lines as I am doing here. Using this water soluble adhesive back tape called stick and rinse to lock the fibers will allow me to cut this square and also make it easy to sew. Mark your fabric on both top corners approximately 16 inches from the edge so you'll know where to stop your elastic on the final step of the sewing process. This is the sequins and ribbon foot, and it does come with instructions on how to change to different guides that are available for it. This is the eighth inch guide I'm changing to. The clear post on the presser foot will drop out of the white guide. Then you turn in the nut until it detaches, and then reattach the guide that you want to use. Choose the whole size that best suits the trim you've chosen to sew onto the fabric. As you can see, you're able to use really wide trims in addition to the yarn that I've chosen to finish the edge of mine. I prefer to use a lightweight yarn on sheer fabric. To determine the correct hole size for the yarn, squish and roll it in between your fingers. Then because the hole size is significantly narrower than the yarn, lay a piece of thread on your table and then cross it with the trim. Then pick up and insert the ends of the thread through the hole. Wrap the threads around your finger to make it easier to pull the thread through the hole. Once pulled all the way through, pull back so you don't waste any of the yarn. Attach the foot according to the instructions that came with the foot onto your sewing machine with the trim already inserted into the guide. Slide the fabric beneath the foot, then select your machine's three-step zigzag stitch also known as a trico stitch or a multiple zigzag stitch or the serpentine stitch. Shorten the stitch length on this stitch and sew a few stitches to hold and secure the end of the trim onto the fabric. Once a few stitches have been secured at the beginning, change your machine setting to a narrow zigzag stitch that covers the trim and offers a little more width to catch the edge of the fabric, probably a four millimeter wide stitch and then vary the length. Start with a 1.5 millimeter stitch length and then increase it if the fabric doesn't feed through. Increasing only one half millimeter at a time. If you increase too much, your fabric may pucker. The stick and rinse tape can be used on both the top and the bottom of the fabric. Once you've completed all sides of the fabric, end using the same knotting technique shown before by shortening your multiple zigzag stitch. Now it's time to gather up the back of the cover using a technique called stretch smocking. It is also known as shearing and is normally done using the elastic thread inside your bobbin, then sewing a straight stitch. But it's difficult to gauge the amount of gather that will occur using that method. So I prefer to use a zigzag stitch and swing over the elastic thread, allowing for a more accurate gather. Secure the ends using a multiple zigzag stitch as before. We will not secure the other end until the gathers are adjusted as desired. Using the edge of the guide to help you sew perfect distance away from the row you sewn before, and sew as many rows as desired. At the end of each row of elastic, change to your sewing machine's 
straight stitch and use a needle position that does not strike the elastic thread. Then forward and reverse as you normally would to secure the seam. Pull some elastic through the guide and cut behind the foot. This way you don't have to feed the elastic back through the opening over and over again. I've opted to use this gathering technique to reduce bulk of fabric in the front of the garment where you tie it. A normal sarong without stretch smocking can become quite full where it ties, making it not as flattering. Once you've completed sewing all rows desired, fit the garment to your desired fullness and sew across each end of the elastic as you did it on the start of those ends so that the elastic thread is secure and unable to separate from the garment. This stretch smock back and trimmed finished edging makes your garment stand out from the rest. After you've sewn all rows, you need to rinse the stick and rinse stabilizer away. You may feel tempted to peel it off, but if you do, there is a significant risk the stitching will break. Rinse instead in a sink until all stabilizer has dissolved and rinsed away. Rinse all sides of your fabric and then it will regain its softness, leaving you with beautiful stitching and no puckers. Allow fabric to dry and adjust your gathers by pulling on the elastic threads and sliding fabric along it until you see a fullness and consistent appearance. This is now stretchable and very attractive. Once you've completed sewing all rows desired, fit the garment to your desired fullness and sew across each end of the elastic as you did it on the start of those ends so that the elastic thread is secure and unable to separate from the garment. You could have just hemmed a piece of fabric to make a sarong, but with these fine details, you've made a distinctively unique cover-up, and because of the shearing on the back, the tie is not too full, and it's much more comfortable. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this sarong to add to your summer wardrobe, or for the perfect gift for someone you love.